there are three main parts to aerobic respiration. Glycolysis is one, and then there's the citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle, as it's also known, and what's called electron transport. And electron transport should sound familiar to you because we refer to part of the light reactions as involving electron transport as well. And so we're going to go through the three main parts and discuss it as a whole by the end. So the first one, once again, is glycolysis. Now glyco is short for glucose. It means sugar. And lysis just means cutting. And that's basically what happens during glycolysis. This takes place in the cytoplasm, as it says in your notes. This step does not require oxygen, and basically it converts sugar, or converts glucose, into pyruvic acid, which is just an organic acid, and we've already gotten a little bit familiar with pyruvic acid when we talked about the C4 cycle. But basically, this process creates a little bit of energy but it requires some energy to get started. Two ATPs and two molecules called NADH, which we'll talk about more in a few minutes, and let's say pyruvate are produced. Okay, so these two are going to contribute to energy. One directly is energy and NADH will eventually get converted into energy, but there's still quite a bit of energy. I'll say, let's say lots of energy left in these pyruvates. And so that's just the very first step. This is the simplest part of the process. This is carried out by enzymes. And 2 ATP compared to the total amount of ATP we'll see that gets made from one sugar molecule is very minuscule. The rest of respiration is where the efficiency comes in. So plants carry it further than just glycolysis. We go the whole route of aerobic respiration. And so the second step of the process or the second group of reactions is referred to as the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, I called it earlier. And these reactions occur in the matrix, which if you recall, the matrix is the central space, so to speak, or compartment, let's say, of a mitochondria. So glycolysis occurs out here in the Cytoplasm, Krebs cycle occurs in here. So pyruvate, sugar gets turned into pyruvate. The pyruvate gets transported into the matrix so the rest of respiration can occur. So in the citric acid cycle, basically pyruvic acid or pyruvate gets broken down completely. There's a series of steps all run by various enzymes and at these various steps, this is referred to as a cycle. Again, it's in a circle just like the C3 cycle. They spit out various products at different parts in this cycle, including ATP. They spit out some more of this NADH stuff. They also spit out another molecule called FADH2. And it also spits out the last remaining remnants of the sugar molecules, and those are CO2 molecules. So we get a little bit more energy produced by the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. We get lots of CO2 produced, and indeed this is the source of the carbon dioxide that is in our exhaling breath. It is higher than atmospheric because when we breathe we're inhaling to get oxygen and we're exhale, as we exhale we get rid of the CO2 that builds up in our bodies as a result of this process. But what about these FADH2 
and NADH characters. And remember, we also had some NADH got, that got produced up here in glycolysis. Well, NADH should sound somewhat familiar in that it sounds similar to a molecule that we've talked about before, which is NADPH. And NADPH was useful in the light reactions or in photosynthesis in general as a means of transporting electrons. And let me erase NADPH because it's not involved in respiration. But NADH is very similar to, is a very similar type molecule as is FADH2. These two guys carry electrons. And they're what we call electron carrying molecules. And so they hang on to them temporarily. They are used to fuel or supply electrons to the third and final part of the process, which is where the vast majority of the ATP gets produced. Remember, we produced a little bit of ATP during glycolysis, some more ATP in the citric acid cycle, and so now we're going to produce a lot more ATP in this final installment, which is the electron transport. And in your notes, you'll also note that it states that this is also slash oxidative phosphorylation. We'll come to that here in a second. But electron transport is very similar to the electron transport that happens in the light reactions, except it's not fueled by light. It doesn't need to be fueled by light. It gets fueled by NADH and the FADH2. Light doesn't have to be used to break up water molecules to provide electrons. These electrons are already in hand in the form of those two molecules. And so they donate their electrons, as it says in your notes. I'm going to go ahead and write it again here. NADH and FADH2 donate with an A, donate electrons, remember that's our sign for electrons, to the electron transport system. And it's just a series of enzymes that are embedded in the inner membrane. And so these, back to our diagram here, the electron transport molecules are all found in this membrane here. And NADH and FADH2 hand off their electrons. Now these electron transport molecules, uh, they like to play hot potato, just like the electron transport molecules in the light reactions that we've talked about. And so they accept electrons from these two guys and they pass the electrons from one molecule to the other, or to another. Now, these electrons have energy in them. And some of that energy gets harnessed to pump hydrogen ions across a membrane. Sound familiar? Let's say some electron energy, I'll write this out, is used to pump hydrogen ions across the inner membrane. These hydrogen ions start building up on one side of the membrane. Remember, these electron transport molecules are actually in the membrane. And so what we're creating is a gradient with a concentration of hydrogen ions that is high on one side of a membrane and low on the other side of the membrane. Now, these electrons have to go somewhere, and there, somebody has to, on a more permanent basis, take possession of these electrons. And guess who that's going to be? That is where oxygen comes into play. Okay, Oxygen accepts the electrons that came from NADH and the FADH2, and they also accept some hydrogen ions to produce, guess what? hydrogens and oxygens, when they can form bonds, form H2O. And so 
there's a final end product. This is also where oxygen is required. And so the electron transport system takes electrons, passes them down a series of these uh, hot potato players or like a bucket brigade in the old way they used to fight fires. And you hand the bucket to the next person in line and so on and so forth. And at the very end of that line, oxygen has to be present to take possession of those electrons. And when they do, they also team up with some hydrogen ions to produce water. Now, this whole time we've been producing a gradient across a membrane and it becomes fairly strong. In other words, these hydrogen ions really want to go from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And there's only one way that they can get across that inner membrane, and that is through the ATP synthesis. This is what is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. Phosphorylation just means addition of phosphate groups. Oxidative means it requires oxygen, and we've already talked about the requirement of oxygen. The ATP synthase is virtually identical to the ATP synthases that we saw in the light reactions, in that their job is to add an inorganic phosphate group to ADP molecules to make ATP and lots of it. The vast majority, it's something in the neighborhood of 26 ATP molecules get made per glucose molecule in this part of the process. The total of ATP that gets produced by the other parts of the process is in the neighborhood of, by glycolysis namely, and the Krebs cycle is in the neighborhood of around 6 ATP. So by far the majority of the ATP gets made here. And it's able to do this, we'll say, continue this statement, it adds inorganic phosphate to ADP to make ATP by using energy from the flow of hydrogen ions. And so just like in the light reactions, here's our ATP synthase, okay, and here's our membrane. And we've got some hydrogen ions on one side of a membrane. Whoops. And very few on the other side of the membrane. And so they want to go through. And that's exactly what an ATP synthase lets them do. And in the meantime, it catalyzes a reaction of ADP plus PI to make ATP. Okay. It's virtually identical, except it's happening in a different organelle in a mitochondrion instead of a chloroplast. So let me restate a fact here that uh, this is the bulk of ATP from the original sugar molecule. It comes from this part of the process. So if we looked at an overall depiction of this, it would look something like this. This is within a cell. We'll see a mitochondria. There's several per cell. Uh, the first step is glycolysis, which takes place in the cytoplasm. We have sugar being chopped up into pyruvic acid, producing a little bit of ATP. Okay, and this then enters the series of enzyme reactions known as the Krebs cycle, which happens in the matrix, producing CO2 some more ATP, but lots of this stuff, 6-NADH and 2-FADH2, we don't want to get too concerned with numbers here. And those go on to donate electrons to the electron transport system, along with a requirement of oxygen, to produce a lot more ATP than the rest of the process, plus some water as a by byproduct. And so if we think back to our overall process, for this, it was 6O2 plus C6H12O6 yields 6CO2 plus H2O 
I think there's six. Uh, yes, there is indeed. It's right in front of me. And ATP, and what it ends up being is a total of 36 ATPs. And now we'll use that instead of just putting energy there. And these are 36 ATP molecules from one molecule of sugar that can be used to carry out various processes in the cell. So now nah, I think it's all fit into the screen. Um, there is, this is also found in your handout, this figure. Uh, but this is basically a summary of aerobic respiration. So inputs, once again, are in orange. Outputs, final products, are in yellow. Carbon dioxide as sort of a waste product, so to speak. Water you could think of as sort of a waste product as well, or byproducts. The main thing the plants are after to produce is this stuff, the ATP.